Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning, here tonight to chat about this new Sandy Alex G album, House of Sugar. Alex G, aka Sandy Alex G, is a Philly-based singer-songwriter who many years ago kind of put his name on the mat with a bunch of very early band camp recordings, and honestly, at the time, while I saw the appeal, they really weren't for me. It wasn't until like 2015's Rules that I really started to get Alex's music. No, around that time, I just really began to click with Alex's very lovelorn, somber tracks that were usually also very whimsical. Like I did actually around this time really thought that I was starting to get Alex's music. However, over his next few projects, I had a lot of mixed feelings. Trick had a lot of great tunes, but was also a little too lo-fi for me sometimes. And by 2014's DSU, I finally really identified my issue with Alex's music. Often I found his songwriting impeccable, but I feel like a lot of his ideas, instrumentally and otherwise, often blended together. Now I did really enjoy the very eclectic, very adventurous beach music. Like he was finally starting to work with some production that I could really hang on to. I just still really needed that one album that I truly identified with with Alex, which I got in 2017 with Rocket. This was a sprawling, daring rock album that was impeccably written and just very adventurous at the same time. And surprising, especially to me, it became one of my favorite rock albums of the year. No, trust me, all my rock playlists in 2017 usually had tracks like Sports Star and Witch and Judge and my personal favorite, Bobby, on them. Now, the singles leading up to this album have been pretty stunning, and for me, going into this album, I kind of thought that Alex could even grow even further after his more adventurous Rocket album, so is that the case here? Let's chat about it. Album starts off with Walk Away, and with these opening notes, I honestly thought that Alex had leapt back down that lo-fi rabbit hole. Very quickly, though, it's shown not to be the case. I love the woozy synths here and the immaculate production. That's right, he has gone from lo-fi in the early years to absolutely immaculate and pristine now, which is pretty stunning. It is a little spacey, and much like the work on Rocket, it is very genre-blending. But man, let me tell you, Alex can still nail that somber, sad boy performance that he's been putting forward for years. I love the way that the very hazy instrumental is actually pretty hard to keep track of, and the repeated vocal line of Not Today is pretty awesome as well. Up next, we have Hope, and honestly, ever since I heard this track, I've actually been obsessed with it. I love the upbeat and folky vibe, as well as the very spacey synths here, and Alex's performance here. Man, does it ever hit me hard. He's always had this great ability to play this sad boy character wonderfully, and here he absolutely nails it. It's honestly probably the best track here and one of the best that Alex has written in years. And as far as the single sound goes, yes, it's still hard to classify, it's still hard to put into a genre. By the time we get to Gretel, it's obvious that Alex is in major risk-taking mode. Like, there is a ton of new influences showing up on this track. I would actually really love to pick Alex's brain about what went into this album. Outside of that, though, this track is kind of the same old Alex, and I don't mean that in a bad way. The strings in the background are wonderful. The plucked guitar is great. This track is lovely. To be honest, I find Near to be pretty timeless sounding. To be honest, of all the tracks here, it's one of the most simple and straightforward. But the sentiment behind this track is just so simple, so timeless, and it just hits so hard. Not to mention, Alex updates it very nicely with a lot of sweeping instrumentals and this continued pristine production. And the vocal harmonies are some of the best here. Sugar is one of the more interesting tracks here, to say the least. I love the much bulkier sounds here, as well as the walls of production and the whimsical synths in the background. And these effect-drenched vocals are pretty out there even for Alex. I love hearing this, though. I love hearing Alex in this risk-taking mindset. But once again, it's pretty straightforward. Dealing with sentiments that we've heard for years, he does it very well. There's also a handful of tracks on here that are a little less shocking, but kind of sound more of like where I expected to hear Alex, and even that is a good thing. Take, for example, Southern Sky. This is the sort of southern-sounding, teary-eyed ballad that I would have loved on his Rocket album. This is such a sweet track. It's still very spacey. It's a very spacey album, as a matter of fact. In My Arms is another fantastic ballad. And like, well, yeah, like I said earlier, I do love hearing him in this mega-experimental mood. It is really nice to hear him go back to his classic ballad sound. 
And honestly, this is one of the most powerful tracks here. Like, I genuinely can't remember the last time I heard Alex being this emotional. And that's talking about a guy who, in his early days, was making a career out of these teary-eyed ballads. But man, this track is just seriously classy, and there's just enough experimentation here to make it sound like it belongs on this album. And Cow is actually really cool as well. From a distance, yes, this is just another great ballad that Alex is bringing to the table. This time, he does bring a little bit more of a southern twang to it, which I think that he actually pulls off really great. And the very airy vocals here are just so likable. And Crime proves that some of these broken down southern ballads are just fantastic. Like, Alex is great as playing the somber sad boy without this southern sound, but with it, it actually makes them larger than life. Once again, the formula to this track is pretty straightforward and simple. But Alex is just such a likable personality that makes you feel for him. Now, there are a couple of tracks here that are kind of not the direction that I want to hear Alex go in. Take, for example, Taking. I do like the cosmic vibes and the wonky production here. But I do have to say, sadly, these vocals really aren't my cup of tea. They're actually kind of goofy and way too light for my liking. Like, I feel like this track could have been something special, but it's just not for me. Project 2 is very sweet and airy, and I actually do like the very tight drum groove here. But why do I kind of just sort of feel like this track is incomplete? Dare I say, Alex here just kind of sounds like he's doing his best impression of, like, a video game soundtrack. There are some decent ideas here, but it's just not what I'm looking for. And I'm sorry, but Bad Man is easily the worst track here as far as I'm concerned. It's not like Alex has never done a southern sounding ballad before. As a matter of fact, half of the album is that, and he does those tracks great. But guess what? This track is not tasteful at all. As a matter of fact, it comes off like a parody. Thankfully, he does give us a nice little treat with the live version of Sugar House as a finale. It's super smooth. It's incredibly soulful. Like, for a live track, it really does wrap up the ideas that a lot of this album has. And Alex's tender performance, once again, is just so likable, if you haven't guessed it by now. So, honestly, this is a really great album from Alex. As a matter of fact, I think he took the very adventurous, wild, experimental vibes to his Rocket album of a couple of years ago and brought in some even better songwriting. And his performances here, more often than not, are just so likable. And you know what? What's even crazier is, at the end of the day, I think he could actually grow some more. I'm feeling a strong aid on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like. Give us a subscribe and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. Until next time, have a great day, guys.